What's up guys, JC here. Welcome back to the fourth video of the iNav series playlist. In the first video I showed you what GPS modules I recommend. The second video was what flight controllers I recommend. Third video was how to wire your GPS module into the flight controller. And now we need to set it up in iNav. And as always, I'll leave links to this playlist in the top right of your screen and description below so you can check out those videos as well as for, uh, future videos. So going into iNav, First you need to flash iNav firmware if you haven't done that yet. Uh, if you have Betaflight or CleanFlight firmware on your flight controller, it will allow you to connect and it looks like everything's working but it's not going to work. iNav uses its own firmware. So uh, now that you have new iNav firmware, uh, look up here. Maybe your flight controller does not have a built-in magnetometer. Maybe you are seeing this, maybe you aren't. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna take you into the CLI to make sure that you have the right, uh, well, let's show you how to get it working. If your flight controller does have a magnetometer built in, but you're not sure if iNav is picking up on that one or the one built into your GPS module, then I will show you how to check to make sure and change it if you need to. I will also show you how to get your barometer working if you do have a built-in barometer but it's not lighting up. And first we're going to talk about getting GPS up and running. So let's go to ports and because in the last video I uh, wired my GPS module into UART number 2, I want to come over here under UART 2 and turn on GPS. If you placed yours on a different UART port then make sure you turn it on for that UART port. As far as the baud rate, you don't. You can just leave this at 38,400 because what you don't see is uh, in the CLI, it's actually set to automatic, so it will automatically find the baud rate you need. Uh, so we'll just leave that there. Save and reboot. Now connect. Uh, next, go to ports. Scroll down to GPS, and you want to turn on GPS. Uh, for the protocol, if you're using the same Hollybro M8N GPS module that I used in that recommendation video, then you need U-Blocks. If you're using some other type of GPS module, then you need to find the protocol that you need. Uh, so I'm going to choose U-Blocks. For ground assistance type, you can pick what continent you live in. Um, but what I do is I just pick Auto Detect because it knows our GPS location, it knows where we live, uh, so you can just do auto detect and it's going to pick the one you need. For magnetometer declination, this is also automatic, but only for F3 and F4 processor flight controllers. So I'm not going to show you how to set this, uh, this is only for if you have an F1 processor flight controller, but I would assume everyone nowadays is using at least an F3. I really can't think of that many people still using F1, so I'm not going to cover that. Uh, now just save and reboot, connect, and now we see GPS lit up up here, so it should be working. Let's go to the GPS tab. Now you may or may not be seeing something here, just like this, waiting for GPS fix. Uh, if, if that's the case, you might not have enough satellites acquired. Uh, if you are inside, inside your house, which I would assume you are, then you probably aren't getting that many satellites. Now I just happen to be sitting right next to a window, so uh, you can take your laptop or whatever, move over to a window, or even walk outside, and you should gain enough satellites for this to be able to work. Uh, the other thing you need to know is, if you don't see anything right away, that's because GPS modules have a cold start time, meaning it takes some time for them to boot up. Usually this is 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the module. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you don't see anything right away, just give it a minute. Um, and if not, then check your the number of satellites you have. Uh, I'm actually surprised I'm getting so many right now. Now if I were to walk outside, I would get probably 11 or 12 satellites. And just know that the more satellites, the better, because uh, the more satellites you have, the more accurate your GPS location is going to be. The reason GPS doesn't work if you don't have enough is that's kind of like a safety feature um, because if there's not enough then it's not going to be that accurate and that can actually cause a flyaway and you will never see your multi rotor again. So uh, assuming everyone has their GPS up and running now, let's talk about, let's do the barometer because that's the easiest one. 
Uh, maybe your flight controller has a built-in barometer but you're not seeing anything here. All you would do is go to CLI, type set space borrow, just like that, then enter. And you're looking at borrow hardware. It might be set to none. What I'm going to recommend doing is just do, uh, if you don't know which one it has, then type set space borrow underscore hardware space equals space and then auto then press enter if you type it exactly right then you will get this message uh, hardware set to auto if you left any spaces out or misspe misspelled any characters then you will get unknown command but once you get this message then you want to type save and enter now reconnect at this point if you were if you weren't seeing the barometer turned on you should now have it turned on if not you may have to manually go in find the barometer you have and type it in manually instead of doing auto now for the magnetometer let's make sure that we have the right magnetometer set so go to CLI and type in set mag then enter once again look for mag hardware now my flight controller does not have a built-in magnetometer so uh, that right there tells me that it has automatically found the magnetometer built into my GPS module. I'm going to break this down into two separate groups. For those of you that do not have a built-in magnetometer, if it is not automatically picking up which one you have, first check your wiring because you could have the wiring wrong. That's going to be the wiring to your SCL and SDA. If you do have the wiring correct, then uh, just like we did with the uh, barometer, do set, space, mag, underscore, hardware, space equals space, and then just do auto, and it should find it. If that doesn't work, then find the magnetometer that your GPS module uses and type it in manually. For those of you that have a magnetometer built in, uh, and you're not sure which one INAV is picking up on either the flight controller one or the GPS module one. You will have to look at the directions or something for your GPS module and find uh, exactly which one it uses. So you guys will have it a little bit tougher and you'll have to do a little bit of searching. And then at that point you would manually type in which one it is. Now I also have to mention if the uh, magnetometer of your flight controller and GPS module is both the same then you're kind of screwed. Uh, the only option you have is you will have to cut the trace going from your magnetometer on the flight controller to your processor on the flight controller. Now you would have to be extremely careful with this because there is a chance of you cutting two traces. If you cut a trace to something you're not supposed to cut then something on your flight controller is going to stop working and then you're, you're probably screwed. Uh, but hopefully that won't be the case and good luck to you. Uh, now because I didn't change anything I'm going to type exit but you would remember to type save if you did make any changes. Next we need to calibrate the magnetometer. Uh, now you do have to calibrate the accelerometer and I've already done that off camera. Uh, that's actually going to be my next video. Also just know that uh, this isn't like calibrating the accelerometer in beta flight and clean flight where you just lay it down flat on the table, you click the button once, and then it's done. This is actually a six point calibration, so it's a little bit trickier. Uh, but like I said, that's going to be the next video. As far as magnetometer, you can click this button and you will have 30 seconds to rotate your magnetometer or GPS module on not just a, in a 360 degrees, but 360 degrees on all axes and you don't want to do this too fast you want to go slow and take your time with it so uh, I know I don't have my camera rolling I do apologize for that but you can see what I'm doing here and I'm going to click the button and now rotate it 360 degrees on one axis then do it again on another axis going slow taking my time and now I'm just going to randomly tumble it very slowly and make sure it gets all the different axes and I will do this until it finishes for 30 seconds okay once it's done it will tell you it's finished and it's calibrated now to check it to make sure 
what you want to do is go to CLI, type in set mag, enter, and what you're looking for is the mag 0 X, Y, and Z. If you have not done the calibration, then all you will see is zeros for all three of these. Um, if you did calibrate it and you're still seeing all threes, then you probably didn't do it correct, or you did it too fast, or you didn't hit all the axes or something. Um, but it's pretty hard to screw up. So once you see that, then you're good. Now you can move your magnetometer or GPS module around, but it's not. Go this isn't like a, a real-time view, so uh, just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to type exit. That's going to do it for this video guys. Like I said, uh, check out the next video where I show you how to calibrate the accelerometer. It will be a very short video and I will see you there.